on the table uh, for this measurement. This is going to be radial and ulnar deviation. So the capitate, oh, he's got a nice one. See, mm -hmm. see the bone pop right out there? That's the head of the capitate. So that's where the axis is going to go. So I just flexed it to find that. I'm going to put my axis there. Uh, midline of the forearm, again, uh, it's kind of pointing toward either the lateral epicondyle or if you could see it, the uh, olecranon, but we'll use the lateral epicondyle. And then the third metacarpo, which is this knuckle, okay? So what I want you to do is turn towards your little finger. So I'm going to be parallel. I can't be on that because if I'm on that, kind of the same thing would happen with inversion, eversion. Now look where my axis is. Okay? <coughs> so I'm going to make sure the axis is in the right place. I'm going to make sure this is parallel with the knuckle. And he has uh, 40 degrees of ulnar deviation. Make sure you don't go to the digit because if I went to the digit, you'd, you'd be getting like 55 degrees of ulnar deviation, which he does not have. Okay, now go towards your thumb, please. Okay, so he's going to go there. And, and again, I'm going to find that and be parallel with it because if I went actually on it, then look at where my axis moved. Okay, so you're, I'm going to be parallel with that. Uh, and I'm going to measure, and he has 28 degrees. And just like similar to the ankle, you found that we went inversion farther than eversion. You're going to find that you go farther ulnar deviation than radial deviation. So that's how we're going to measure it there. So make sure that you're stating those landmarks. Pretty easy measure. It's nice and flat on the table. The only thing you got to do is make sure that the elbow's back to 90 degrees. Okay? All right.